is six o'clock, so I would like to call this meeting to order. And first, what we have on the agenda tonight is a public hearing. So the public hearing is about a particular matter, and it is not public input unless you wish to speak to the item on the agenda. There'll be another opportunity when we open our regular meeting, which should happen in a very few short minutes, where you can talk to items on that agenda or um, have make other comments as you wish. So first, I want to let you know that this is a live council meeting and it is being recorded. Your personal information, including your image, voice, name, opinions, and any other personal information disclosed by you during the meeting is collected by the city of Roslyn under the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act for the purposes of your particip participation in this meeting. If you have any questions about collection of your personal information, please contact dco at roslyn.ca. If you do not wish your personal information to be collected, please do not join the live council meeting. Um, so if you wish to comment, please put your hand up so I can call on you. It'll take just a couple seconds for our um, monitor there to upgrade you to a panelist so you can speak. So we just uh, ask, ask for your patience. And with that, um, I would like to uh, have a, a call to order of the meeting and uh, move that the agenda here for our bylaw consideration. Um, can I get a motion to open this? Somebody okay, Dirk and Janice, and I think we're all set to go, all in favor of it. Okay, so the purpose of the public he hearing is to consider the following, zoning amendment bylaw 2750, short-term rental zoning removal. And this is to rezone multiple properties there on, there's four of them, I guess, on the list there, from R1 STR to R1 residential I, uh, residential infill. So the city is removing short-term rental uh, zoning from these properties because either they no longer meet the conditions required to maintain that zoning or the owners no longer wish to continue with the zoning. So the removal of zoning will create the potential for other neighboring properties to meet the conditions to apply to rezone for STR operation. The deputy corporate officer will provide information about how the public hearings were publicized and if any correspondence or petitions have been re received um, for the record. Cynthia? Uh, the public hearing was publicized in the April 22nd and 29th editions of the Rosson News and in accordance to the Local Government Act. The city has received one submission in support of the uh, zoning amendment bylaw um, from a potential applicant. Okay, thank you. Now, is there anyone who is in attendance who would like to speak to this matter? If so, you can raise your hand and we will call on you. Okay, I don't see anyone. Uh, so there is no uh, public input on our public hearing. So I will call for adjournment of this meeting. Okay. All in favor of adjournment, we're good. Okay, next up, um, we have the uh, electronic meeting um, notice, which I'm not gonna read again, because I just read it and I don't think anyone new joined us since then. But before we get started tonight, I do have a statement that I would like to share with all of you. Um, I wanna make a brief statement to address some of the concerns that have been circulating in the community. So as council and staff know, I'm in the United States with my family. Since almost all of our activities continue to be handled remotely, I have not neglected my duties as mayor. I have continued to attend and chair all meetings and fulfilled all of my obligations. If the mayor's physical presence was needed, the acting mayor will step in according to the schedule that is established each year. Um, so far, this has not been needed. Um, my trip was not a secret. My decision to go was carefully considered and, and weighed very heavy on my heart. Um, council staff and numerous people in the community were told of my plans in March. I left Roslyn first week of April and immediately got vaccinated. Um, and I've been very careful to stay just with my family. Um, also, it's important to note that as uh, 1.4 million other Canadians, I am a dual citizen. So I am allowed into the United States and I am eligible for vaccines there. I do regret the concern and consternation that this has caused in the community um, and any issues for council. I've apologized to council all already and I also want to apologize to the community. I understand that people are frustrated with the ongoing restrictions of the pandemic and the lack of family contact. Just like many of you, it's been a very difficult time for me and my family. And I agree with the people who have believed that elected officials should be held to a higher standard. And for the last 13 years that I've been in local government, I believe I have done that. I made this decision first as a mother and a grandmother, not as a mayor. And I, I realized that it was a mistake. Uh, once again, just because I was allowed to make this trip, 
I was wrong and I apologize for my decision. So I am uh, hoping for your understanding and um, that's, that's it. Okay, so that said, I will now um, oops, hold on. Uh, call this meeting to order and open it up for public input. So first of all, I wanna ask people who are interested in speaking to anything on the agenda, which it, the, the fact that I'm in the United States is not actually on the agenda, but if you wanna to speak to something that's on the agenda, please raise your hand. And if there's, once those people are done, if there's someone who wants to speak to something else that isn't on the agenda, I will call on you then. So is there anyone who wants to speak to items on the agenda? I'm scrolling. Okay, I'm not seeing anyone. So now, as you know, our policy is for people to speak for two minutes and you will be timed and we will have to cut you short because we do have other things on the agenda. And I do wanna say that the issue of me traveling is really not a council issue. It was the personal decision that I made and I would welcome any of you to contact me um, you know, contact me and send me an email or something and I can, I can talk to you about it then. But, um, you know, we have a lot of things on the agenda that we need to get to and this really isn't a council matter. So I would, I would certainly appreciate that. All right, now that said, is there anyone who wishes to speak? You can raise your hand and we will pull you up. Um, okay, so I'm not seeing anyone who wants to speak. I'm a little surprised. I figured somebody would want to speak. No. Uh, Rachel, do you think we have any issue, any technical issues? Not that I can say. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess you're all here to enjoy our council meeting with us. All right. So thank you. Um, I'd like a motion to adopt the agenda. And Terry and Dirk, any additions to the agenda? All in favor of the agenda as presented? Okay, great. Um, now we have our delegation and our delegation is a presentation from Grant Thornton and our municipal auditors on our uh, audit for the year ending December 31st, 2020. So I think we have Kirsten there, I've lost, yes, there she is, Kirsten. You may start your presentation when you're ready. Unmute? Yes, we can hear you. Welcome. Can you, can you see me? We can see you and hear I can. you. Okay, I can't see myself, so that's weird. Um, so thank you for, uh, for having me today. So I'm Kirsten Packham. Oh, there I am. Okay, I can see myself now. Um, I'm Kirsten Packham and I'm senior manager here at Grant Thornton um, and manager in charge for this year's audit. Uh, so I am here just to report that uh, the audit was successfully completed and with no modification this year and no internal control issues um, that we identified as part of our process. Uh, I, I do want to um, just mention as part of our process um, that there's been no subsequent events that have been brought to our attention that have um, that have happened since December 31st. So that would be things like liabilities or commitments that um, that the city has made that um, we, we felt should be identified in the statements. So um, I just need to bring that forward. There was a, a report to council that was provided and I believe is part of the delegation package. And so I just wanted to make an opportunity um, if there was any questions from that report. Okay, council, does anyone have any um, questions on that? Chris, I, I wanna thank you. The audit was uh, well done, professionally done and I appreciated the opportunity to speak with you. Um, or, you know, and I think that's great. You're gonna make that a normal part of your process going forward uh, because as, as we all know council is the one that hires the auditor. So it's important that, that we have that connection. So council, is there anybody other than saying it was a great job and also to thank our financial staff because one of the reasons the audit was so good is because our staff is so good. So, okay, so is okay. that it? I think so, just, yeah, thanks. Um, thanks to Alma and her staff for uh, a job well done. Uh, they they make, our make our job easy, so. Um, thank, thanks for that. And uh, yeah, I think, I think that's all for me. Okay, that was a very short presentation. Thank you. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Thanks. Okay, next up we have some minutes. So first is the minutes of the Heritage Commission meeting on April 12th. 
and that these be adopted. Do I have a motion? Chris and Dirk, any comments or questions about those uh, minutes? Okay, all in favor? Okay, good. And next we have the minutes of the regular council meeting held April 19th. And this is that we adopt these minute, minutes, get a mover for that. Okay, Andy and Dirk, uh, any comments to those minutes? All in favor? Okay, good. Um, next, we have our bylaw notice enforcement and dispute adjudication system bylaw number 2749, and this is for adoption. A mover, Janice and Stu, any comments on there? Adoption is adoption. All in favor? Okay, great, thank you. And now we have our zoning amendment bylaw 2750. This is the short term rental zoning removal. This is what we had our public hearing on where no one spoke. This is for third reading. Do I have a mover? Okay, Andy and Dirk, any comments on that? No, nope. all in favor. Okay, good. Uh, next we have, oh, hold on, did I just? Yeah, no, I think that's right. Okay, um, our five-year financial plan, 2753. This is for adoption, um, and I need a mover on that. Janice and Terry. Okay, any comments? Great job. All in favor? Okay. Uh, municipal tax rate bylaw 2754 adoption. We've got lots of lots of adoptions tonight. Who wants to move that? Andy and Dirk, all in, uh, any comments? All in favor? Okay. Um, now we have the Ofer Reservoir Local Area Service Tax Rate 2021 Bylaw 2755. This one is also for adoption. Somebody, hands up. Chris and Dirk, any comments? No, all in favor? All right, Red Mountain Specified Area Tax Rate 2021 Bylaw 2756, also adoption. Okay, Andy and Janice, all in favor, unless there's a comment, I don't think so. Okay, there we go, good. Um, zoning Amendment Bylaw 2759, this is for 1926 Kirkup. And this, we're reading this for the first and second time and that we're gonna schedule a public hearing for June 7th. So this is the applicant wants to rezone to R1 infill and then subdivide, makes a second house. So we got a mover on that. Uh, okay, uh, Dirk and Stu, how about some uh, discussion on this? No, I, I like this one. It uh, doesn't really impact anybody. It's a nice flat spot, close to the trails. Okay, Stuart. Yeah, it seems like an obvious one to subdivide. Okay. No issues with that. Okay. Terry, you had your hand up. Yep. Um, just supporting that. It makes good sense. And it's uh, a good densification project as well. Okay. We'll make sure we, um, we um, look for good neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Two door okay. um, any other comments here? Call the question. All in favor. And we'll, we'll see what the neighborhood says on the 7th. Um, and now we have our audited financial statements, and this is that we approve them as presented. Can I have a mover? Janice and Andy, any comments here? I think we're all good on that. Okay, all in favor? Great. Um, okay, now we have our supplemental statements of financial information, our SOFI, and this is that we approve the SOFI report. Um, I could tell you a story about that one, but I, but I won't tell you some other day um, how we used to never get these on time and now we're getting them on time. I just love the efficiency of our finance department as, as I've said before. Mover on this. Uh, Chris and Dirk, any comments? All in favor? Okay, great. Um, development variance permit application. This is for 2601 Pinewood Drive. And the staff recommendation is that we approve the permit application, the variance permit application. It's a change of the rear setback from two meters to 0.3 meters. And it's a driveway width variance from four meters to 11. Um, so I'll take a mover on that. We can discuss it. 
Uh, Terry moves it, Janice seconds it. Okay, Terry, you can start us off. Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear. Um, so I, I uh, have read the um, objections by the neighbors and uh, I have some questions about, uh, I guess, to city staff around uh, the snow. It, it's been recommended that it that they can make the snow removal work, but um, I'm concerned about uh, the volume of building. I, I trust Stacy would let us know if that took up more than the allowable space on the lot, but um, this seems like a lot of homage to vehicles and parking for um, um, the space that's there. So I'd love to be convinced otherwise, but I'm not fond of, of this variance. No, okay, I'd like to hear from staff, uh, staff comments on the, on the opposition that we did get. And I, I think that's, this is a perfect time to talk about it. Stacy, you wanna start it off? Sure, I'll start it off. So the first comment was sight lines. Um, so it meets our bylaw for sight lines for distance from the corner from property line. It's more than five meters along the property line. So it does meet the bylaw for sight lines. Um, the, I guess the, the requirement for it, um, he, he wants it not to build a suite or anything like that, although they would be allowed to build a suite if they wanted to. Um, it's just to park trailers and toys. He doesn't have, or they don't have the um, ability on their lot to just pull a trailer up onto it. it. You can see if you've driven around there, it's all elevated from the road. So it's not like they can just drive and put the trailer there. They have to build something. It doesn't necessarily need to be covered obviously, but um, obviously it's in their best interest to cover it. So. That's why they want to park all their toys, et cetera, off the road, which uh, does assist operations. And our manager of operations, Scott, did go out and visit and has talked about the snow there. Along Park Street, you can see that there is no place to put snow on the, I guess it'll be the west side because there's a driveway to another house right there. So the only place they can put snow is up onto that property and they do have a challenge there. So getting the snow easement will be a great assistance to Public Works, but I won't speak too much more on that because Scott has been out there and, and discussed it with okay. the- um, Good, okay, Scott, Scott, can you comment for us too, please? Yeah, uh, so I sent my four person and my operator down there to check it out and the, that corner has been problematic in the past. And we s checked out the with the driveway and uh, they said it was actually a benefit to utilize that easement, pushing the snow towards that and then blowing it up on top. So it would actually help us out. Okay, great. Um, Terry, did you finish your, your remarks there? Is that, is that good for you? Okay, I'm, yep, gonna go to Janet. I'm gonna go to Janice because she was the seconder and then I see Dirk has his hand up. Yeah, the only question I had, which uh, which Stacy addressed in an email today was the percentage of coverage, which Terry also brought up with the buildings on the lot. And uh, with the additional buildings, they will be close to their limitation, but that will be, uh, that will be controlled by the building permit and inspections while building. Um, and so I'm, I mean, I'm satisfied that the major concerns that the neighbors have about, uh, about it becoming a short-term rental or um, even sweeting aren't really what this, uh, what this uh, is the purpose of this build. The purpose truly is that they just have a lot of toys that they wanna put away in the winter. And it's, uh, I think it was really great of them to offer and you know, come to us and offer a snow easement that helps us out. Um, in return for uh, a variance. So uh, I wish all that, uh, I wish everybody who wanted a variance was uh, as cooperative and collegial about how to get get there for with it. Okay, thanks. Um, Dirk and then Chris. Yeah, I, I think my issue is the, but most of these when we, or my, my understanding of what a variance is for is to address a need, something that we need to do to get two cars off the road and this does not seem anywhere near to be a need. If they were asking for parking for two cars, that would be a need. Essentially, this is parking for two cars and a storage unit that's, you know, encroaching. And I don't, I don't really support this. Just it seems like too much. It's not fulfilling a need. It's fulfilling a need and a heck of a lot of a want. Okay. Um, any staff comment on on that remark? 
you know, well, I think a lot of variances of both needs and wants. Um, I think the need in this case would be that they do have the toys and they need to get them off the road. Um, and the hardship in their case is the, the topography of their lot, how it's raised from the road. Okay. Um, Stuart or Andy, either of you guys want to speak? Haven't heard from you. Uh, Stuart. Yeah, I might put it in slightly different words, but I'm generally in sympathy with Dirk's perspective on this. It seems like variances should be there to deal with unique situations, not just people who want to max out their lot. I mean, yeah, they want to squeeze as much as they possibly can on there and change the character in the, of the neighbourhood in, in a, you know, an incremental way. Um, you know, I, I, I don't see a compelling reason to, to, to give them a variance in this situation. Okay, thanks. Chris, I apologize, I missed you. <laughs> uh, no worries, I figured, there. <laughs> I figured I'd get there eventually. Um, yeah. Question, uh, the designs look like the roof is gonna hold snow, is that correct? So the snow removal from that area really is non-existent um, if it's gonna hold snow. Um, and I like the I like the uh, the snow easement. Um, I think that we we lack that in a lot of places in town. Okay, Andy. Oh, I I'm going to uh, also um, err on on uh, conservative uh, opinion here. I think that uh, I did go and take a look at the lot, and I agree with Stacy that this is a problematic uh, build, and that the whole house is raised all up, so there isn't the space presently. But I also think building uh, a massive garage um, covered is going to change that uh, whole neighborhood. I'm in favor of allowing them to excavate the space for their toys, but not in building such a large uh, uh, building on, on that space. And again, uh, there's no restriction, as I understand, for them to excavate. It, that, maybe I should get that question confirmed by Stacy. No, that would be a driveway. They do need to still pull into there, right? So that is the driveway right. with would still apply for that. But oh, okay, structure. but they wouldn't. Right, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be requiring a variance, or would it? Driveway would. Oh yes, it would. Well, to have a driveway that's four meters wide wouldn't, but to have a driveway that's eleven meters wide does require a variance. Yes. Okay. So if uh, they. So regardless, if they want to create parking um, on that lot, they, they have one parking spot already, that's it, under their existing carport, that's, that's it. So um, if they really need to apply for a variance in some sort or another, depending on what they create um, and where. Okay. This was, I'm, I'm guessing the choice of location here was just based on how the house is laid out. Okay, does anyone have any other comments on this? Yeah, Janice. Well, I was just, uh, you know, from the report, I understood that I read that they have a, you know, they obviously have two cars, they're a two car family with a single car parking uh, space uh, in their current configuration and they have a trailer. So really, you know, the additional toy parking is uh, a single space uh, above and beyond what uh, about what we're talking about they have a spot out front to put one car a two-car garage to put a car and a trailer in and then a additional carport they're asking for some configuration of where they put things um, I don't you know for a, a family that wants to have a trailer and doesn't want can't leave it on the on the street all winter um, maybe they have skidoos and you know bikes and other things that they would also like to store inside somewhere other than their basement. Um, I don't think this is a, this is, this is not an exceptional ask uh, for a two car family with a trailer. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Anybody else have anything? All right. I'm going to call the question. Oh, Dirk. Yeah. Is it, I mean, is it reasonable to kick this back to the applicant and ask for something a little more modest is that i mean how does that stacy do you have to know but um the variance that was asked for and then the neighbors were notified for 
um, is they've already been notified about that. So if we're going to start again, we basically have to start the process again. You mean if they if they came back they came back with something more modest, we'd start over and mm -hmm. and. Yeah, but maybe yeah some we'd have to notify the neighbors of a different variance because they've only seen what they've seen and that um, it's, it's not fair to the neighbors to um, approve a variance that they were or to consider a variance that wasn't asked for in this stage. Um, and I want to add one other comment and they can a lot of what happens when people build any kind of garages is most of you know is most of the most of the time the garages are not full with cars they end up being filled with toys um and then cars go out in the street i'd say that's probably what this applicant was trying to avoid okay Stu. yeah i'm just trying to find the right words here but really i just think that if you want to have a property if you want to store five vehicles on your property you should buy a property that fits five vehicles on it Lots of properties in Roslyn don't have that capacity. I don't think that's not every every place in this community has space for that. If you're going to be start pushing out into the neighbourhood and affecting the, the rest of the community, then we well, probably made a poor choice. Okay. Other comments? I mean, I don't think they are talking about five necessarily five vehicles, but uh, well, they, they're making five five vehicles parking spots. Yeah, that's true. Um, Anyone else want to speak to this? Dirk? Yeah, I, I, I think for me, I'm still erring on the side of not supporting this in part because it's it seems like a big ask and it's a little uncomfortable. And there have been a number of comments from a number of neighbors that are not supportive of this. And I I think that that has to factor in a reasonable amount, you know, the happiness of the, the neighbors to me. Uh, other comments? Anybody? Okay. Um, okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna call the question on this. I mean, I I, I hear both sides of this for sure, um, but I actually think it, it's I like the idea of the of the easement, and I also like the idea of getting cars off the road. Um, so I think I'll support it, but not without reservation. Okay. I'm gonna call the question. All in favor of granting the easement? Okay, and opposed. Okay, it fails. So, all right, uh, moving on. So we have a development permit amendment application phase four caldera, and that is that the city amend the existing development permit for caldera to include the area. And I'm not gonna go into the whole area, but um, also there's the condition that any additional recommendations from the environmental consultant uh, that are not on the original development permit are registered as conditions on title of the relevant lots. So do we have a mover here? Caldera phase four. Chris is a mover and who's a seconder? Stu is a seconder. Chris, would you like to start us off? I think it looks good. Um, I'm appreciating the growth out there and, and the amount of kids and families that it's bringing to town. So no, I like it. Okay, Stuart. Yeah, I've got no problems with it. Um, I mean, I'm a little bit involved in there with with Red, working on how they're going to incorporate uh, and change some of the trails around it. So it seems like it's all going to be uh, to the positive. Okay, any other comments on Caldera phase four? Andy. Looking forward to uh, the report from the environmental consultant that at some point there's going to be um, uh, the consideration for the for the amphibians was discussed. At first, when I looked at the map, I was confused. I thought, oh, it's on the uh, on the west side, and I know it's actually on the east side of the development. So on the west side is towards the ponds, and I was concerned about the effect there. Um, but it sounds like there's an overall plan being created, and I'm. I'm happy to hear that that's going to be a uh, priority. Um, and, I, and I recognize this phase four doesn't affect that at this point. Okay, great. Any other comments? Betty, I'm going to call the question. All in favor of this? Can I just ask a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, Stacy, I was just curious at, at what stage the um, geotechnical issues are going to be dealt with. I know that there's some uh, some rather spectacular old mining activity in that in that area that they're going to develop into, and I'm wondering how how and when that's going to be addressed. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's definitely part of the subdivision application. So it is already, so phase three um, has some geotechnical reports coming for uh, a few of the proposed lots, and it will be a, another condition of subdivision for phase four too, because of the mining issues and, and the steep slopes in that area too. Okay. So I haven't okay. seen it yet, but it's coming. Okay. Okay, Andy. Or there was one other item I wanted to ask about. I noted that the bird survey um, that was done for 2020, but not 2021. So uh, obviously there could be, that could be different today than it was a year ago. So I'm just wondering why there wasn't a stipulation to do a, a follow-up survey for now. Uh, Nesting well, survey. there will be. They, they have to do one as part of a development permit condition for any work that they do. It was done 2020 in preparation for the work that was done in 2020 for when they cleared the swath of land that you can see where there's a sign right now. Yep. It was done for that just prior to that. And before they do any work for, on the actual subdivision itself, so, you know, digging up and putting in everything, there will be another bird survey and depending on the location of where they're building. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, anything else? I'm gonna call the question. All right, all in favor? Okay, I called it a little too fast last time, sorry guys. Okay, next we have the 2021 Active Transportation Planning Grant application. And that this is that we endorse the application and for uh, the grant and program management. Great timing with our OCP review. Who wants to move this one? Janice and Chris, comments? Janice? Nothing, Chris, nothing, anybody, something? Okay, all good. Uh, Stacy, do you have any comments or you're just, you're just showing us your pretty face? Yeah, I Wait. thought I've shown my face in case there was any questions. questions Basically, yeah. I just thought this is an opportunity to get extra money on our OCP and focus on the active transportation part of it. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's great. Okay, I'm the gonna call good. Yeah, <laughs> all in favor? Okay, next up we have Madhu and the city park use request. Um, we have a mover here for this. We approve the request, Dirk and Andy. Dirk, comments? No, Andy, comments? All good. All good, anybody comments? No. Um, yeah, we do appreciate the fact that they uh, recognize it is our property and came and asked us uh, permission, but you know, they are public parks. So all in favor? Okay, no one opposed? Okay. Okay, now we're on to city reports for information. So if anybody has any questions or comments, just raise your hand. Otherwise, we just, uh, we just go through these. So first is the trail, uh, the RCMP uh, quarter st stats. Anybody have any comments on that? We can always get a member of the RCMP to come and speak with us if we want a presentation on that. Um, then we also have our updated uh, task list. Any comments, questions on that? Uh, Andy? So it was about the RCMP report. I guess with trepidation, I looked at the report thinking, okay, what, what is a year of, of being locked down done? Um, and I was surprised to see it. there hasn't been much change. So <laughs> uh, surprised and happy to see there yeah. hasn't been much change. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Uh, okay, so we're moving on to members reports. I'm going to start with Chris. All right, busy couple of weeks. Um, had a museum development committee meeting. Uh, we reviewed the conceptual drawings again and the up to date changes. And there was a really good discussion around the interactive mine experience part. I'm pretty ex excited to, to see this come to fruition. It's going to be a, a real benefit to both the museum and our town. Uh, Tourism Rossland meeting on the 22nd. Uh, we welcome Jesse Steele, the new GM of the Prestige. So welcome, Jesse. Um, sitting still down about 70% from last year on the MRDT money coming uh, coming in. So it's a really good litmus test on tourism and how busy we really aren't. Um, work plan is around um, applying for grants to be ready for events uh, and being ready for when uh, COVID restrictions are lifted. So weddings and possible music festival, and et cetera. I'm looking forward to, excite to uh, getting out and doing some of that when we can. April 28th, uh, Affordable Housing Society meeting for the Midtown Project. 
Um, you have to forgive me. I've already forgotten what the acronym is. It's the RMC, I think, or P. Uh, uh, working forward uh, since approval of the budget and uh, working on operating agreements and building permits and uh, anticipation of a mid-May start. Um, and then I had a Rosslyn Museum and Discovery Center meeting. Uh, their annual golf tournament is, uh, they've uh, set it up for the 28th of August this year. So I'm hoping that that can come through. Um, they're working on the uh, Rosslyn Food Sustainability Library of various items that we can use to, uh, to garden and produce uh, fantastic things like pressed fruit. Um, the food press, uh, we're look, working on a place where we're gonna have everything that people can take out. Um, long discussion of enhancing the capabilities of the internet. And for the frustration of not being able to properly conduct business becomes more frustrating um, during these times Chris, of non-contact. Chris, Chris, I have to interrupt you. That was classic, right? When you were saying, you know, the possibilities of internet, you froze, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, business is becoming frustrating. And as we grow into the experience, we're going to need Uber connectivity up there. Um, and then there's a call out for uh, committee members to join the museum. Um, the Museum and Discovery Center Board is a, is a really rewarding volunteer experience um, for the minor time commitment and a fun project to be a part of with the perspective enhancements up there. So um, it's a call out for me as well as um, if I can get Kristen on board with putting, uh, putting that online as we did with the Heritage Commission. We were very successful in, in attracting some people. Um, and great people. So, and that's it for me. Thanks. That's great. Thanks. I'll put it in the uh, quarter, the uh, monthly newsletter too that they're looking for volunteers. So, Thanks, all right, Dirk. Dirk, you're up. Uh, yeah, I, uh, the only meeting for me I could not make, and that was Sustainability Commission. I'm sure it was awesome. They're awesome. Um, I did go to an EV presentation virtually on the 28th, put on by. Um, Energy Task Force and Sustainability Commission. And it was great. And I am more interested than before in an EV here in town. And that's it for me. Good. Stu. Oh, you're muted. Yeah, I attended a presentation by Marilyn James at the library. Um, she was making the case um, while she was providing information about some projects they're working on but mostly she was making the case for the autonomous Sinaixt as the legitimate um, original inhabitants of this area and she's a very forthright speaker and has lots of very opinionated things to say about the government and the various other First Nations and the politics between all that um, and uh, if we wanted to get into it at some time, um, the, the very complicated and contentious issue of First Nations acknowledgements and how the politics of that might work in our area might be something we want to uh, dig into with trepidation at some point. Okay, thanks. Uh, Janice. Thank you. Um, on the 20th and the 27th of April, I attended a couple of um, economic development task force meetings. These guys are uh, working hard. They're doing some good job work for us. Uh, we're getting some good feedback from our local businesses um, through the thought exchange feedback program or platform that we put out. Uh, we'll decide at our meeting this week how long we're going to extend the availability of that platform uh, for. Um, and Jim gave me access to the, uh, to the um, background, um, what do they call it, the, the, ah, lost the word, the background, so I can just see where all the thoughts go and what they're doing and how they all mesh together. It's super cool. I could spend hours in there. <laughs> um, but we are getting some really good feedback. We're getting some really good participation rates, although we're a little low on a few categories. So if I could ask council, if you know anyone who has a business of their own, Dirk, uh, or who does consulting, or, you know, runs a nonprofit, Stuart, uh, if, they could, uh, if they could fill that out. I mean, we're looking for feedback from all different types of businesses, large, small, 
um, just to, and we know that we then, you know, everything that we get back will be under, within our control, but it'll give us a good picture of where we're at with businesses in Rossland. Um, April 21st, I had a great meeting with the Selkirk College Environmental Planning Group at the uh, Midtown uh, site, and we talked about uh, the real life uh, results of planning. <laughs> So they were really an engaged group. They were really enjoyable to see. And I think they trotted down and saw Stu and talked about trails right after they finished with me. Yes. I said, oh, you got to see Stu. So they were just a really enjoyable group. Um, we covered topics and they had lots of questions. We talked about the OCP. We talked about zoning. We talked about growth. We talked about traffic. We talked about infrastructure, all the exciting things and densification. So um, but I enjoyed my time with them. It was very, uh, very nice to see young people that engaged and interested in uh, uh, how municipalities work and what planning, what planning does and how, what it looks like when it actually hits the ground over time. Um, on the 22nd, I met with a local building contractor. He wanted to discuss some ideas with me about um, making building practices greener in Rossland. He had some good ideas that we're going to continue discussing. Uh, and um, the biggest idea was um, to try and figure out a way that when they uh, are excavating for foundations to not have to truck dirt all the way down the hill and then pay to dispose of it. If we could find a way where we could sort of recycle it, because then of course, invariably someone has to go buy dirt or sand or, you know. Um, so I've had a few thoughts about that. I'll try and meet with them again. And we'll go from there. And then also with Chris um, and Kathy also attended the Midtown transition meeting. Uh, we still haven't got final feedback from BC Housing, uh, but uh, the Lower Columbia Affordable Housing Society has also approved the tendered bids for the project. And so, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to um, getting through the rest of the, uh, getting everything else aligned and uh, getting that started. I think that'll be a, a great addition for town. Great, thanks. Terry. Uh, the only thing I have to uh, report on is a meeting I had at, with the Rossland Refactory Group. Um, it was on April 15th and they're uh, um, moving forward with plans to uh, do some small um, manufacturing using recycled uh, uh, plastics. And uh, Dirk, I think there was a uh, an email back and forth that um, you had been sitting with those guys. And if we wanted to do a handoff, I'd be happy to do that if there's anything that has to happen with council here, but I'm, I'm happy to continue to sit in with the Ross and refactory group. Great. Okay. Um, Andy. Uh, lots of meetings uh, to report on in April. I'll have a report a written report for the next council meeting. Uh, I also attended the um, AKBLG annual general meeting last Saturday uh, by Zoom. Uh, lots of interesting resolutions brought forward. Uh, the vast majority passed uh, the, the uh, attendees and will be forwarded to the UBCM convention uh, upcoming, whether virtual or in person in the fall. So uh, yeah, that's all, that's interesting. I do enjoy the resolution session. It's uh, something to, to realize that the collective uh, energies and uh, authorities, I guess, as well of, of all the uh, municipalities and regional districts around Kootenays and Columbia, especially in the boundary, uh, we have a collective voice there and it's really nice to see those resolutions come forward and be supported and then go to the province and hopefully the province uh, uh, will also see the value. Uh, we have collectively the will to, the power to move and shake things. So it's really nice to be able to do that as a collective group and to discuss all our issues that are so often common amongst us. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, the UBCM is virtual um, in September, sure. and pretty, pretty okay. much that. So, okay, so I had a wonderful session with two grade one classes at RSS. Again, these kids are these kids are just great. They ask all kinds of things. My favorite question of the day was, "Are you allowed to have tigers in Roslyn?" And I was sad to say, no, we would not allow you know wild wild animals as as pets. But anyway, it was great. It was really fun. 
Um, we continue to have the weekly mayor's roundtable with IHA. And I, those notes that I send out to you that go out in the information packages um, are basically a summary of what goes on at, at those, uh, at those um, groups. Now, at this point, the last one was said 35% of people in our region who are, have, who are eligible for vaccines have gotten them. So they really do have a push to try and get people to, um, you know, to, to, to get the vaccine. And there is some vaccine hesitancy as, as we've seen. Um, but they do want us to, to do what we can to encourage people to get vaccine. If you're 18 or older, you can register. And then as soon as your age comes up, you can get your, you can get your uh, vaccine. Um, and now AZ, uh, AstraZeneca is now approved for anyone over 30. Um, and that's based on the team of the national Canadian um, epidemiologist experts. It's not just, it's not just Bonnie Henry. It's, you know, that's, that's throughout. Um, uh, like Andy, I was at the AKBLG AGM and our resolution about wildlife rehabilitation passed. Um, and they, we, they intend to have an in-person session in radium in early October, if possible, depending on the situation. Um, that, that was the one that was postponed from last time. And the board, the executive board was in need of volunteers. So I put my name forward and I'm now serving a one year term on the AKBLG. They needed a volunteer who'd only do one term. And I said, well, because I'm not running again, one, one year is a perfect term for me. Um, so joined them. Um, the Resort Municipality Initiative mayors had met to discuss the new restrictions um, to hint to limit interprovincial travel into the into three health regions, Island Health, Vancouver, Fraser, and Interior Northern. So they've divided the five into three and are requesting that people stay that way. And of course, this happened long after I left town. So, you know, that's awkward, but um, had a call with uh, Minister Osborne and Minister Farnsworth and the mayors and CAO of Interior and Northern Health. Brian was on that call. Um, and we were supposed to get some notes on that. Um, they're talking about the new travel restrictions that they put in in the third week of April. Um, they're supposed to last until May long weekend. And the biggest issue is that hospitals are being overwhelmed. And I was supposed to get some notes from that, and I haven't seen any. Brian, if you have, you can you can add them because I don't think I've seen any. And then, of course, the Midtown Project team is going to be moving to once a month now that we're uh, just about to head into construction. Um, but other meetings on the ground with with other members of the team, not necessarily, in fact, not the elected people, um, will be happening. And as Chris said, hoping to start third week of May, and we still have no word on our energy efficient grants that we applied for that would take the project up to a higher energy efficiency, so we're hoping for that. And I participated as an EV owner in the, um, e the uh, Sustainability Commission's uh, presentation, and I have to say Matt Watkins, the new chair of the, EV, of the Energy Task Force, is doing a great job. I think he's a wonderful addition to that group. And he did a very, very good presentation. It was really interesting. I mean, of course, like so many things that we do when we're trying to reach out to the public, we don't get that much public to show up. And it's really too bad because there was some really valuable information. I wish I wish more people had come to it. And I think, do you know if, yeah, do you, do you know if that one will be, will be, was recorded? I just was. I'm, I'm a, Dirk's I'm, got a I'm thumbs guessing. up. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's already posted actually. So posted on the SC site? I, I think so. I saw it on Facebook. Okay. Okay. Well, that's great. Um, okay. So we just have, uh, that's, that's the end of our members reports. As you can see in the agenda, we've released some declassified. Oh, hold on. Okay. So there's a note saying Dirk has his hand raised, but I think it was just for that point, right? Um, that we've declassified a few things that's there in the agenda. And we have no in camera tonight. So I'll take a motion to adjourn. Everybody's good on that. Okay. All right, guys. Great to see you all and uh, take care. We're done. We're out. Bye, all. Bye. See you later. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye. Well,